Next, what we are going to do, we are going to use Fiddler. Uh, this was once a very popular tool, and uh, the company is still using that because this uh, tool, Fiddler, allows us to visualize the network traffic which is going between our browser, or actually our machine, to in the, and the server. See what kind of requests were made and what kind of requests we got. But that will be after the break. Okay, let's have a break, 15 minutes break, and then we'll continue. Uh, once upon a time, I mean, uh, maybe say three years ago, or something like that, it was a very popular tool, okay? Everyone got crazy and people tried to put that in the resume. Uh, because companies are requesting that. Nowadays, it's not a big deal because we have many tools which is similar to that. This is probably the trailblazer uh, for that. But uh, it's very useful when you like to analyze the traffic. Okay, what's going on, what actually requests, you, uh, what, uh, what requests your browser did, and what you got. This is actually particularly useful in the situations when you have different part of the application, the same application, I'm not talking about the browser, and this part of the applications, they interact with each other using HTTP protocol. Because HTTP protocol is not specifically limited to the browser. Okay, you can create two pieces of applications, uh, I mean two applications, but they can communicate using HTTP protocol. Okay, uh, and then that will be UI-less mode. You don't see anything on the UI. Simply they're exchanging data using HTTP protocols. Okay, for that, for this situation, it's very important if you have to, you should be able to tune this traffic and see what's going on. If something doesn't work, then you simply cannot connect browser to the, <laughs> the application because that you will not see anything. But nevertheless, you should, be understand, you should understand what's going on behind the screen, scene and then uh, uh, make, make, make uh, the decision. Actually, I recall the time when I was talking with one developer. They were developing exactly these applications, different modules. They communicating with each other using HTTP protocol. And when this, the developer discovered Fiddler, he was so happy, saying, you know, now I can see what's going on. <laughs> I can figure out. For me, it's not a big deal, because I knew about this, about this application. But he, he, that guy was very, very happy, actually. He was a very big fan of this Fiddler. I said, yeah, it's just a tool, one of the two. But he was very happy, so I could not convince him. Anyway, uh, this is the site where you can get it. Uh, uh, Fiddler 2, and I should see Fiddler.exe, this one. I believe it should, okay, yeah, thanks God, it's working on 64-bit. Okay, and this is how the application is. Essentially what, uh, what happens is that all the requests which you do on a browser, because you work with the browser with Internet Explorer this time, uh, all requests you do, all communication you do with the browser, this communication will be, uh, will be shown here, what happens behind the screen. Okay, for example, if you make a request to the Yahoo, then this uh, request will be shown here. And definitely you can have some statistics here of this request. You may see inspections, you may expect that. You have some filters, you have a log, for example, what happened. And um, the timeline, see if your requests were actually received within a given amount of uh, given time. And then you can filter out unnecessary requests, for example, if you know that some advertisement company put some advertisement, you can filter them out so you will not receive them okay, at all. So essentially, we are not going to cover all this functionality. I'm going to cover main, main functionality of Fiddler. So um, what we do here, we have a clear cache. We have to clear the cache. Uh, OK. So um, I'd like to refresh this. No. OK. Uh, Okay, so anyway, this was done with Fiddler, and I'm going to open Internet Explorer. Uh, Fiddler is up and running. I don't do anything. And then I open Internet Explorer. Okay, and in Internet Explorer, I make a call, call to yahoo.com. Okay, so this, uh, uh, I, I queried Yahoo. And then I navigate to Fiddler. You see that requesting information from Yahoo does not, I mean, requires more than one request, okay? So what the request is? So let's see, uh, let's go to Yahoo. Where it started? Uh, these two requests, msn.com, is actually happened when I started the browser. And by default, they navigated to MSN.com. So that's why I'm going to eliminate this MSN. I'm not looking at them. 
Uh, let's see, MS, MS, San. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see the Yahoo stuff. Okay. So this is not it. So I'd like to clean this. Okay. Uh, clean. I'd like to clean a uh, clear view. No. Edit, select, or remove. Select it's all sessions. Okay. I removed all sessions, so it's pretty clean, clean machine. So I'm going to Internet Explorer and reload. Thank you. And reload the uh, Yahoo again. I I don't leave this hundred port here. I request the Yahoo again. Huh. Oh, it should be yahoo.com. That's correct. Okay, fine. Now it was working. You see that I'm now requesting information from Yahoo, and I'm getting this uh, screen populated. Everything comes from Yahoo. And uh, what happens with this 502 uh, code? What does it mean? We actually cover this code. What well, is 502? Uh, sorry? No, this code means something very important. We covered this code. Remember, we covered code 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Five codes, five, uh, anything which starts with a 5, it means that problem with the server. Okay? So 502, uh, I believe it says uh, uh, internal server error. Okay? You can, uh, I don't remember that. I don't memorize it, but this is what it is. So this happens because. I requesting yahoo.com, and I, I don't know why, but <laughs> it actually came from previous session. So it requests specific 100, port 100, okay? I'm saying I'd like to connect to Yahoo server on specific port 100, and Yahoo definitely would not allow me to connect to 100 port 100 because default port which is open for me is 80. 80 port 80 is communication for a web communication, okay? Yahoo allows me to con connect to the 80 port, and I don't need to specify port 80 by default. Okay, it knows where if I request HTTP connection, it goes to port 80. But uh, port, port 100 is blocked. Okay, it's not open for me because that might be security risk. That's why this request failed. Okay, and here uh, I requested this uh, uh, Yahoo site again. Okay, and this time it's actually I got 200 message, which is. Request is okay. It means that no problem with this request. And then all these requests which I made, uh, this request actually why we have so many requests because Yahoo has a lot of, has a huge contents. It has images, links, advertisement, and so on. And all these uh, uh, links and uh, whatever part of it got uh, obtained during uh, separate requests. Okay, that's why for each image, for each uh, item on a, on a page, we have separate requests for that. And this request may pass and may fail, depending, okay? So in this case, you have, for example, image. You see the image icon? Uh, these are images. This one is configuration file. It's most probably is CSS. Yeah, that's what the CSS is, okay? We're also getting CSS. The second one is the uh, page itself, Yahoo page itself, which is a plain, ex uh, plain HTML code, okay? Which contains a seven, seven kilobytes code, HTML code. Okay, this is size shown here. And then uh, it also shows which process which is running local on your machine requesting that information. In this case, it says iExplorer process. And then I believe it should also show the process number. Uh, yeah, okay. So what happens is that everything you start on the machine is running on the process. And that process has ID. It's called PID, PID process ID. And in this, man, in this particular case, on my machine, I had several instances of Internet Explorer, okay? And uh, each instance has a separate ID. For example, if I like to specifically kill this process, I have to go on the console window, say, kill space the 3156, and in that case, that Internet Explorer will be killed. The other Internet, Internet Explorer will be up and running, no problem, okay? So that's uh, if, in the case if you need to uh, um, debug this. And then caching, also uh, I used cache, it should not be the case uh, if you do real testing. And then this is the URL, you can expand it and see what happens. Let's go down, 
but that's not only uh, information from Yahoo is coming. I, I saw some double click site from double click. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Uh, in my case, that's 77. See this one? And I believe I got flash, uh, flash advertisement. Okay. This flash advertisement, which you see on the Yahoo site, is not Yahoo content. It's actually Yahoo is get paid for that to place that. And this content is coming from a company which is called, oh, sorry, not this one, I'm sorry, 77, at doubleclick.net. This is the advertisers, okay, this marketing and advertising company which they place their content here. So it means that some content is actually redirected to the other uh, servers. And the redirection is very easy to figure out because we have 302 code here. 302 means redirection, remember? Uh, codes 300, status 300 indicates redirection. What it means is that we have a link on a Yahoo page, but this link points to other server. So that's why we have redirection. And actually this content we are getting from different sites, in this case at doubleclick.net, which most probably placed a, a cookie on your uh, computer, okay? And so on. That's what uh, in principle it is, okay? There is nothing more than that here in this fiddler. It allows you to analyze the network traffic. And if you are debugging something, this will allow you to see what's going on. For example, the resource is not found. For example, if you don't see image, what happened? You can figure out, try to find out, maybe this image is not requested, maybe it's absent, maybe you get different error codes. And definitely, uh, most important of all, you have to look for the error codes like this, 500. For example, 500 codes. For example, if you request some site and site is not available, this will, try, uh, this will tell you why, what happened. Maybe you type URL incorrectly, and maybe your server within your company is not up and running and not working. In that case, server will respond with this error, and then immediately say, you know what, I got fired to error, and then you start investigating it further. So nothing like that. It basically opens the cover and shows the communication which goes between your browser and the server. Nothing, nothing more than that. And definitely you can leave your log, timeline. So let's see log. Uh, yeah, and this is the log which, uh, uh, event log. This is the event log. But you can actually save this information in the log. And then inspectors, you can see the headers only. You can see the web form submitted. For example, if user submitted some web form, for example, pass user ID and password, you can see that. Uh, cookies, you can see the cookies, uh, JSON, uh, XML and so on. Uh, uh, basically, you can visual, uh, it allows you to visualize everything you uh, in a tra network traffic. Okay, any questions? Uh, if, you are, if you have several uh, browsers, for example, if you like to trace down only one browser activity, so what you can do, for example, I open Chrome here, and I like to catch traffic for Chrome only. What I do, you get this target icon here, if it says any process, you drag and drop this guy on Chrome, okay? And then only process for Chrome will be uh, monitored. But that's, that's a small feature, it's not a big deal, okay? Okay, uh, stream, yeah. Okay, so you can play with that, uh, and then uh, you can say you know that because it, it doesn't take much uh, energy to learn that, and if you forgot, that's okay. You go to the company, you immediately refresh it. Okay, it's not a big deal here. So let's go back to the presentation. Okay, I have to first close the Chrome. I have to close the Fiddler. So minimize this. Uh, okay, this is Fiddler. Okay, this how uh, it works. Uh, so <laughs> using Fiddler, you uh, I mean nowadays they have application which allows you to download a, a clip from YouTube. But before it was not like that. Before it was uh, pretty little bit difficult to find out the uh, original source of the clip. Because when you navigate to YouTube, there is the redirection happens with the mangling of URL. So figure out where the URL is with the actual file name was difficult. And this uh, slides actually slow uh, show that the uh, investigative work we should do with the Fiddler to find out where the source is. For example, if you go to the features uh, movies, when you click on this, um, uh, some one of the clips, you're actually viewing FL, FLV file, FLV, 
file, but it does not show, the browser does not show the actual location of that file. It shows the redirected one with a different URL, okay? Using Fiddler, you can f find out what actually what file was requested and where that file is located. You can navigate to that site and download the movie. Nowadays, they have this application available, so you can uh, use that application, download the local, make a local co copy of that movie, okay? So, um, uh, and then Fiddler definitely has a, vi a video uh, available, so you can watch and see how it goes. It's not a big deal. You can save a session, you can archive the session, it has that possibility, and you can store it, and then you can analyze in details. You can analyze headers, for example, what header contain. Uh, cookies, uh, when the request was made, who made the request, and so on. 